Everyone loves retrospectives because that's where you get to improve. And everyone loves demos because that's where you get to show your finished work to the customer in waiting. But nobody ever mentions backlog grooming as their favorite scrum ceremony, but I think it should be, and here's why. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, friends from all over the world. Thank you, as always, for joining, for tuning in, subscribing, commenting. I'm so happy, so privileged to be able to speak to each and every one of you this week and every week. Backlog grooming is fast becoming my number one choice as the most important ceremony in all of Scrum, then how come it's so often ignored or done poorly? First, let's remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There are so many resources about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a unique and powerful force in this industry. And if this helps you, tell your friends. And don't forget to check out my daily Agile Inspirations for Leaders by subscribing to my email list. You'll get a preview of next week's posts and a free video to help you align your week with strength and focus delivered right to your inbox. You can also submit your coaching or leadership questions all at badassagile.com. So go sign up and post your questions today. Backlog grooming is the process of refining, adjusting, reprioritizing stories or value items so that they can move off for further elaboration and development. But as with all scrum ceremonies, there's just enough rails to keep it practical and simple. So we know that the product owner must, for example, be the one doing the grooming. The team can only advise on things like the impact of changes to existing estimates and what's technically feasible given solution constraints or the limits of a given technology and so on. We also know that a business analyst can give input as to which value items may go well together or how to make something even more valuable, but ultimately it's the product owner who owns the product backlog and therefore is the one responsible for doing the grooming. And yet, this is a ceremony that tends to get the least amount of love. It's done most infrequently and most poorly in my experience. Now, maybe it's a low-glory, low-visibility job. After all, the developers can just as easily take cards off the stack, put them into the sprint backlog. Any questions that pop up as we're developing, we'll just ask the product owner as the sprint proceeds, right? No. Guys, there's so much more value in doing backlog grooming properly that we're not considering. Number one, backlog grooming can eliminate an awful lot of waste. By keeping the backlog properly prioritized, we're ensuring that the lowest value stories don't get the highest amount of attention first. This is a classical area for waste traditionally. So adding some discipline around constant reprioritization allows us to avoid spending time on things that don't really matter and don't add value. And number two, proper backlog grooming allows us to make sure that we maximize the time that the developers have with any given sprint to do actual development work. Because if we're doing requirements and clarifications well into the sprint, we're reducing the number of days we have available for development and testing. It seems that in the software world, when timelines get tight, proper backlog grooming is the first thing to get sacrificed. And I think that's a mistake. I want you to pay careful attention to and supercharge your backlog grooming practices this week, and here's why. Without backlog grooming, there's a tendency to simply do what feels most pressing in the current moment. Bug fixes, late customer demands, or even just, wow, cool feature. Things that we dream up in the middle of the night can go into the sprint backlog with no real control or order around how things get into the development pipeline. Remember this. All development costs time and money. If you want to effectively reduce waste, we have to pay careful attention to what gets into the sprint backlog. And without backlog grooming, we never really stop to assess the value versus cost trade-off of any one given item. 
A properly groomed backlog item has both a cost estimate and, in my view, should also contain a declaration of value. That may or may not be as precise as an ROI estimate. It could just be a ranking from a scale of 1 to 5 on how much customer value this adds, or how much revenue opportunity it represents, or how much of an expense saving it could possibly provide. I think as Agile evolves, I'm noticing a trend to cheat on the Agile processes because too often the focus is on hurry up and get it done quicker. And as you know, I think this is a terrible mistake. And when you trade the Agile disciplines, you also trade some of the benefits. See, when companies first hear about Agile, it's often this religious moment where they desperately need to try something, anything, that will reduce the cost of production and get them to the deadline with as much of the original promised scope intact as possible, thereby saving their highly visible and vulnerable necks. This is just lazy management. As Agile spreads from the development realm to non-technical areas, backlog grooming becomes ever more important. Here's an example. Think of something simple like producing this show. I generate about 10 to 20 ideas a day to put into an idea funnel. And just like it is with the software product backlog, this is tantamount to a brain dump. It's a wish list of everything that I might someday want to see in the podcast. Some of them have very little value, if any. Others will be the most important episodes I've ever done. The point is, I don't know that at the time. And here's the real magic of backlog grooming. Backlog grooming is responsible for fixing one of the most insidious problems of traditional software development and product delivery. Creating a business requirements document based on that brain dump of everything we think and everything we fear we might want now or in the future. If you can think of it, you'd build it. So building that wish list is in no way a magical thing. The wish list is just a place to put all your creative output. In that sense, it's extremely valuable. However, it's got to be tempered by something, something to help us control the brain dump and the wish list so that only the most important things get done and the most important things get done first. So while I generate 10 to 20 good ideas every single day, not all of them are that good. Not all of them should become podcasts. And I know that. But it's important to have that freedom to do the brain dump or I'll never create anything. I'll always be waiting for the inner critic to go away, for the great ideas just to land in my lap, because I don't feel free to write down the bad ones. So the backlog is, in a sense, a freeing structure. It lets people dump down everything that they may or may not want in the future. But what tempers that freedom is taking a few days away from the list and coming back to it once or twice a week. So when I write podcasts, if something sounds like a great idea in the moment that I write it down, and it still sounds like a great idea a week later, I'm probably onto something. I feel like I could write for hours and hours on the topic because I'm super energized about it, and I feel the same way a few days later, then this should be an episode. But something that just pops in my head, and then a few days later, I can't even remember what I was thinking of, then that was probably a momentary flash of inspiration or passion that's probably not sustainable, even as a 15-minute show. So I gotta let it go. I have to make a practice of going in once or twice a week to filter through those ideas. If I had to estimate, only 1 out of 20 are actually worth elaborating. But can you imagine if I created a full-fledged episode out of every idea I ever had? I would have wasted a lot of time and angst trying to write perfect scripts, make perfect recordings, and publish things that I ultimately didn't care that much about, and neither would you. And this is exactly the type of problem we're trying to solve with agility. Not building a whole bunch of features that nobody ever uses, but everyone seems to want because it seemed like a good idea at the time. Or it's the way we've always done things, or it's what we expect. It's exactly the backlog grooming ceremony that allows you to go back with the rational mind and evaluate and re-evaluate if something still seems like a good idea. A good idea after what? After you've had time to sit with it. After you've had time to ask customers what they think is valuable. After you've had time to react and see if it reflects changing market conditions. If it still seems like a great idea a week 
or a month later, then yeah, it should stay in the high priority pile. But all too often, as we know, when budgets and timelines are tight, things that seemed like a good idea when you first spit it out don't seem like such a great idea when you realize how much you have to pay for it, the true cost of doing it. Now, isn't that true of life in general? So the two main reasons why you want to honor the backlog grooming ritual, number one, it's a serious waste buster. And number two, it frees the creative process by tempering the creative brain dump with a little bit of sanity and some double and triple checking. So this week, re-energize your backlog grooming game. Pay careful attention to doing it and doing it well. Take the time so that it can save you time later and see how it changes overall team performance. Friends, thank you for tuning in. You can reach out at badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. I'll see you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.